coach um, kind of recycle one I had for the players. What about the the style of basketball that you've built this program with mm -hmm. is suited to March, in your opinion? Well, uh, <clears throat> it wouldn't be fair if I didn't give credit to uh, Charlton C.Y. Young. Uh, he is an associate head coach at Missouri, but before Missouri, he was uh, a, a mentor for me at Jacksonville, and he's a part of the Leonard Hamilton defense at Florida State. And uh, one day he just pulled me aside and he said, yo, if you want to like, really be a tournament team, you, you got to have a defensive system, and right now you don't have one. And, uh, and so he spent the whole summer with me, teaching me their system uh, for Florida State men. And uh, I'm a student of the game. And I followed it to a T, from how we play out of bounds to what we do defensively. And uh, we, have, we have come up with our own identity. There, there are just one or two things we don't do that they do just because I just think um, when you think about you know, men's basketball and the way men are built, there's some things that just didn't work for, for women's basketball. Uh, but but the whole philosophy, our language, how we talk, how we think, uh, that that's the origin. Um, and so, and and we've been doing it since year three at Ole Miss. And um, he said he said if you keep doing it, you'll be able to be deep in the tournament. And the reason why is because it's very hard to simulate uh, because it's a system. So usually when we play teams, we don't spend a lot of time saying, hey, with this action, we'll guard it this way. No, we have a way we guard actions, we guard ball screens, we guard, and so, and, that, and that's where our, our players' confidence is built. You know, so, so while some teams, and, and it, people do what works for them, you know, they change it for the opponent, we don't, we don't change our philosophy, which is to dictate and disrupt. Now that, it's, that's, Ole Miss women's basketball. They didn't call it dictate and disrupt. Uh, but when we started really buying into it, living it, uh, we started saying, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to dictate and disrupt people on the, def on, the, on the defensive end and what they're trying to do offensively. Kurt Rollo, Associated Press. Taya mentioned uh, it was a bit of a shock coming from the Big Ten to the SEC. It was so much more physical. Mm. How, has, how has she handled that transition in your eyes, and how valuable is the impact she's making? Well, first of all, I want to tell you I'm glad I, I have a new contract because you made me nervous with that Maddie question because she's a hot commodity in Oxford, and I didn't want them to get any ideas. See. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She'd be a great coach, and she has already let me know that I need to have a position for her when she's done playing basketball. But, um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've had 17 transfers in six years, and uh, so that is an adjustment for players that don't come up as freshmen through our, through our system. But it's easier because we have a system. So most times when we have transfers come in, Maddie, you know, the people that have been here say, okay, this is what we do. And we put them in the front of the line, and we, we start introducing our defensive philosophy as soon as they get on campus. And uh, I think the reason why it's difficult initially is because, like, if you don't guard, you don't play. And I let you know that when I'm recruiting you, but it's nothing like being sat down because you – you don't want to keep people in front of you. But what I do love about our defense is that it's, it's – I think it builds character because it's something that you have to do that's challenging. Anything that's challenging, you have to have character. And everyone knows that in, in, in sports, uh, when you score, that's what brings joy, right? And so let's even talk about philosophy. I prefer to be on the defensive end for the last – 
possession than the offensive end. So while one would hold the ball so that they can get the last shot, I prefer to be on the defensive end. So like if we're on the defensive end to win a game, I'm way more calm than on the offensive end because that is who we are and that is what we do. And, and I also want to mention this too. While, while the Southeastern Conference, our play is physical, uh, we play a clean style of basketball. And a lot of coaches like to come in here and use that against us, and I don't think it's in a positive way. You know, we're not Bush League. You know, we're not fouling you all over the place. We show our hands. We beat you to spots. We jump and block your shot. Uh, uh, we have a system, so it's really clean. And so because we speed you up and you fall, we didn't make you fall. We just sped you up. And so I want to really make clear that Ole Miss, Ole Miss women's basketball plays an aggressive but a very clean style of basketball that some people look as physical because we're in your face. You get what I'm saying? So you run all of this complex action, and then when you stop, we're still there. Well, that's because we're athletic. That's because we use our hands. That's because we are confident in what we do. But um, I wanted to make that clear because sometimes it's used not in a negative light, and, and that's just not true. We just meet you at the rim. And I know that's unusual uh, for women's basketball, but that's how we play. We just heard Maddie kind of talk about making the decision mm. to, to, to be a leader. Um, obviously, <laughs> you know, the outcome has been, been positive, but maybe not always easy for this team yeah. this year. Um, <clears throat> do you think you would, you would be here had she not really made those contributions off the court, kind of in the locker room? Yeah, um, when you say here, meaning? A seven seed in the NCAA tournament. Oh, uh, shoot. I don't think we would be a seven seed without Team 49. Like, this is really a group effort. It's one of the things that I've enjoyed. Our team understands, everybody understands how important their role is. From the person that puts out the markers, for me to write on the board, you know? Because if that marker is dry, you just took five precious minutes away from me to write on the board and now I'm in a panic. Um, and so everybody understands their role. Uh, obviously I have an appreciation for Maddie. Maddie believed in me when not a lot of people did. We were 0-16 when Maddie committed, you know? And, and now, She's decided to give a fifth year, and and that's not normal in today's, uh, in in today's you know, in the sport today because of the portal, and so this young lady has started from the beginning to now, and so when you talk about winning, I I've won a lot of games, but just to see her up here and articulate in the manner that she did, and even Taya, who's been here two years, that's the win for me. Uh, we'll turn it over to a Zoom question here. If we can get it to work. <laughs> Hi, Coach. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Hey, Gabrielle. Um, you, you mentioned this a little bit earlier about how, you know, the clean, calculated defense of Ole Miss. Do you feel like your team and the SEC are unfairly, like, treated and portrayed? And why do you feel like that? I think, it, I think it's an easy out. Um, I think sometimes it's a lazy narrative. Uh, I think it's a way if, if teams in the Southeastern Conference beat you, you can say, oh, well, they play Bush League. And, and, I, and, and, I, and I know it's unfair. You know, we, we held Stanford to 49 points last year. You know why we did that? Because teams in the Pac-12 did not guard certain people that they didn't think that they could shoot. You know what we did? We guard everybody. We were in everyone's face. And it was shocking. It was not something that they're used to. You know, Marquette is a great team. But I've watched every game they've played. No one has picked them up full court. It's no secret. We play 94 feet. You know, 
It's shocking. It's overwhelming if you had, not even UConn, it's overwhelming when you experience it. And, uh, and we have to change that narrative because in the Southeastern Conference, we're the most athletic. So sometimes I think we get unfish, officiated so unfairly sometimes because it's a style you haven't seen. So like my players, we get beat up a lot. You know, because we can jump and we can jump over you and we can do things that not a lot of people can do. And so officials miss the call. And, and, and I end up telling them a lot of times, like, don't, I know you're, don't get caught up watching the beauty of what Marquisha just did. <laughs> she got fouled. And I know it's beautiful that she glided in the air and then went underneath the basket, but someone hit her on the way. And, and I know that we don't, we don't teach flopping, you know? We don't fall all over the ground. We play basketball. We sit in front of you. We take a charge if you run over us. Sometimes we don't, even in those moments, we wall up. And so I think it's a na lazy narrative. Um, Let's, let's look at last year. I mean, South Carolina got beat up by Iowa. I mean, the fish, I mean, they came out with the report and said that, you know. But why didn't it get called that way? Because South Carolina is big. South Carolina is athletic. Same thing that happens to us. And, and it's very, in the official's defense, it's very hard to officiate because you do get caught up with us flying in the air and that kind of stuff. But that's why I'm going to use my platform to say we play a clean style of basketball. And most times we get beat up a lot. We just don't cry about it. And so hopefully, you know, we will continue to show that um, in this tournament uh, if we ha are fortunate enough to, to win and go deep. But starting on Saturday, tomorrow, you know, I don't even know what day of the week is it. Is it tomorrow? Start. <laughs> if you had, if you told me it was Monday, I would believe it. Uh, uh, so hopefully uh, we get to show that tomorrow uh, that we're going to be in your face, uh, but we're going to show our hands and and we're going to be an incredibly calculated with the way we play. Coach, did uh, did Stuna Collins travel here with the team, and is she still a part of this program? Yeah, Snudder, Snudder did not travel with the team. Snudder, uh decided to step back for a second. Uh, I mean, the timing couldn't be any worse, <laughs> if you ask me. But I support our players. Uh, Snudder's getting ready to graduate. Uh, she's been a part of the program. Uh, we did not have talks about her coming back like Maddie. And so, you know, I didn't know if that would be a possibility anyway. And we support her 100%. Coach, you finished the season winning seven of the last eight games, and Maddie kind of talked about that mm. that turning moment. But from a coaching staff standpoint, what do you feel like changed in this team? I think what, what Maddie said uh, rang some truth probably a lot. You know, this year has been very difficult. We come in ranked 12th, you know, expectations. You know my feelings about preseason rankings. I don't know how they exist. Uh, but at the, at the same time, we knew we were going to be good. We go to the Bahamas. We beat Arizona and Michigan and a good Howard team. Uh, and then versus Michigan, uh, KK tears her ACL. You know, that was a shock to our system. And we didn't get to stop. We had to play. And so we were figuring things out as we go, kind of like Texas. You know, it was that big of a blow for us. And so then I play Maddie at the point some, and then we had Zakaya there, and then we had Kennedy Todd Williams at the point. And it has been not only from a strategic standpoint a challenge, but emotionally. Anybody that knows KK Deans, uh, she's a mini me, you know, from her bravado, her persona, just how she moves, her swagger. It is on. 100. And so for us to lose that, it made people have to step up. 
when we lost to South Carolina and then Texas A&M at home in the fashion we did, Toddy got ejected uh, because she had a tech and an intentional. Um, I, I brought the group in and I said, you guys have to make a decision right now. And there are only two sides of this. There's a winning side and there's a losing side. It's not a Coach Yo side. It's not a team side. It is a winning side and a losing side. Choose. And then what I did for that whole week, we had a bye week. Every day I would, I would show, we would start practice with showing them videos of winning teams' press conferences so that they can hear, like, this is how winners talk. This is what winners do. This is how winners think, you know. And it made Maddie step up because KK was a crutch uh, because she was just so confident, you know. I mean, like, KK would be putting us on her back right now. And while it was detrimental, it was the best thing that could happen to us, uh, looking hindsight right, because she got a year to see and watch how we play, she'll be back. And then uh, Maddie, Toddy, Quee, Team 49, had to make a decision. And, and they did, and we won seven in a row because they started saying, okay, this is my job, this is your job, this is your job. And Maddie, your job is to lead. And no one wanted to kind of tell her that. It was kind of strange. And I said, it's okay for you to tell her you wanted to lead. Doesn't mean that she has to take all the pressure but that's her role. And so everybody had a role. Everybody bought into their role, and that's what you're seeing. And we were fortunate to play, I think, three games without Snuda because she had hurt her um, elbow. And uh, that helped us as well. Uh, so, you know, we're prepared to play with who we have. We'll go to one last question on Zoom here from Gabrielle Lewis. Coach, preseason, you talked about how this team had high expectations for the tournament. You know, they were already talking about a Final Four. <laughs> um, but you said you don't believe in skipping steps. So what are your players' expectations for the tournament? What are yours? Yeah. And then, like, how are you grounding that to not get ahead of yourself? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I, that's why I love doing this. Because young people, like, they have absolutely no fear. And I think sometimes coaches, media – we, we give that off. I'm a parent, all right, and uh, just funny. So, like, I'm afraid of snakes. <laughs> but my daughters, my 11 and 6-year-old, they're not afraid of snakes. And so if we go to a zoo, I go this way. But I don't tell them to come with me. I let them go and pet the snake <laughs> because I don't want to give them that fear. Because someone gave that to me. Like, how did I know to be afraid of a snake? Someone told me to be afraid of a snake coming up. And so what I won't do is kill their dreams. Uh, and as you go through life in a season, they become wise. And it's almost to a detriment because they lose games. Stuff happens. And now a fear is built. And so I don't want my team to have that. But at the same time, I want them to understand that if we want to get to, to the Final Four, we have to win four. And the winning starts tomorrow versus Marquette. And so we, we are present. Uh, my one word for this year, shout out to John Gordon, is steady. I don't get too high. I don't get too low. Um, my focus is Marquette. That's my focus. Um, and, and what we have to do to dictate and disrupt Marquette not only on the defensive end, but the offensive end. I know y'all been talking about our defense, but look at our points. The last seven games, we get a bucket too. Uh, so just trying to decide, trying to keep them focused on the steps, uh, what it takes, and then seeing where we get to uh, from it. Because last year, we really only wanted to win. I would have been happy with just winning one more game than the year before. You know, but we started winning. It felt good. We enjoyed the West Coast. Voila, we end up in the Sweet 16. So I'm just here for the ride with the team. <laughs> Thank you very much, Coach. Thank Appreciate you. It.